Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video we are going to be doing the Waste Not, Want Not contract. So for this contract we need to grab two consumables. We are taking this from the Institute Warehouse, which if you guys don't know where that is, this is the gateway from Crossroads just off to our left here. It should pop up. There you can see the square. So yeah, pretty close uh, to Crossroads. And we need to bring this to Abandoned Buyer. Buyer must be like uh, a different word for a farm or something. Is that... I mean, I know this, uh, this update is around farming. And the last time they built like a little... I don't even know what you want to call it, but... If you guys saw the last episode, you know what I'm talking about. Alright, sorry, I just paused it quick. I wanted to check to see if, uh, well, if there was any good, like, place to off-road. <laughs> just not to, like, save time or anything like that, just for fun, really. But there's not really any good places around this area. This big mountain kind of sticks out quite a ways, so... I mean, at the most, you can only go, or at least the most useful would be just 20 feet off to the left, which I guess is still off-roading, but there's not a real good shortcut through here is kind of what I was getting at, because then, yeah, as you can see, this road kind of goes in, and you could still off-road going around it in the back, but there's kind of no point you're making a longer trip that way. You could just cut straight through, which... I don't know, could do that as well, but yeah, it just uh, didn't really make much sense. And up here again, I can cut through this, but this road just weaves around it and then you're there. So not really much point to it to try and off-road during this section here, I guess. And uh, we are using the Zixi 605R. I'm sure most of you guys probably know that, especially if you've been watching me for a while. This is uh, one of my favorite trucks, one of the more capable trucks. But I'm trying to mix it up quite a bit. This truck just happened to be the closest one that had a cargo bed. And it's funny because as I started this, I'm like, man, I should have saved it for a tough contract or task. You know, something that I needed to go a long distance over a harder area through a swamp or something. I, I took it on one of the more easy ones. Oh yeah, this is like a barn. Farm area, I said barn. Alright, let's get this dropped off. Two consumables here. Oh no! It dropped bricks right in front of us. I drove a truck to... What is it? The... the right next to the trailer store? On the crossroads? They have bricks there. I drove a truck. Ah, uh, man. Alright. You guys probably saw this on the way in. I had this cat sitting here. We had to get a cistern from just back off here a while ago. And... Yeah, I, I, I've said this quite a few times. I left this truck there because I usually leave all my trucks wherever they are if I can. Obviously I use them, you know, often, but I try to leave them wherever they are and then if I need fuel, if I need a crane, if I need a trailer, if I need repair points, whatever it is, hopefully I have a truck somewhat close. I would say this is especially helpful if you're making YouTube videos or any kind of videos really because then you don't have to spend a half an hour driving another truck up or you know just to get a tire fixed or a crane to pick something up or whatever because it, it just cuts down on a lot of the time it would it'd be helpful no matter what but especially if you're trying to make videos out of it it just makes editing a little bit easier a lot less footage smaller files stuff like that easier on the computer as well 
less time recording, smaller files again, so it doesn't have to render in as much. But, oh shoot, oh, okay, we fell off, but I think we're good. Oh, maybe not. There we go. Well, it's kind of funny, I was just saying how I should use the Zixi on a when we're have to drive through some swamps or long distance or something like that and now I mean I gotta drive this the drive we have to do on this one's quite a long drive. What does this sign say? Oh, nothing. Okay. I saw it on the way in but I didn't look at what it said or even what shape it was. But I guess I keep forgetting to say this, but uh if you guys wouldn't mind giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel would really help us out. So we're trying to grow and the likes and subscriptions definitely help with that. I'm trying to say it more at the start of the videos hoping to convince a few more of you to uh, to do it because I didn't used to say it I just kinda had an end card that said do it and uh, yeah I'm trying to more actively promote it I guess if that makes any sense. So if you guys wouldn't mind give me a like subscribing if you're into this kind of content because as I've said before if you guys like this kind of stuff odds are you're gonna like stuff I've made in the past and stuff I will make in the future so that would be very helpful for me and it would give you some content that you would either get some enjoyment from or information I know a lot of you guys are here from some of my more informational videos uh, my my three most viewed videos are how to get the Taiga 6455B hang on let's uh, restore the crane then let's stop the engine for fuel there we go completely empty now and pack yeah, if I want to come get this truck, I'll have to come and drop off some fuel, but it's out here. My three most viewed videos are how to get the Taiga 6455B, how to get the Azov 43191 Sprinter, and how to get the gear of its K7M. So, there's a good chunk that, a good chunk of you guys but the first time you saw my videos was one of my more informational. You know, I'm gonna go this way. So, I've told people to avoid this way because I've drove it one time. Not even. I started driving it and then I was like, wow, this is bad. I am not going this way. But I have one of the more capable trucks. I'm gonna try and drive through here and see how bad it really is. I've only drove through here with a mod truck on the uh, public test server of this, so I honestly don't really know how bad this is. I don't think it's actually that bad, just on the part where I was, was just a bad spot with a not so great combination of... I, I was pulling a trailer, and so yeah, it was just... yeah. You have the right truck and the right setup, this looks like it's going to be a pretty easy one. Yeah, I was right here and I was like pulling a trailer into this and it was just getting stuck and I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. But back to what I was saying. Once we uh, once we go through the gateway, actually, I'll show you guys where we were at, where we were coming from, going to, that kind of stuff. But yeah, a lot of you guys probably first saw my videos was some type of how-to video. And uh, I know those are what drew a lot of you guys in so I mean if you if you get some some use out of it which I know obviously a lot of you guys have uh, yeah just appreciate a like and a subscribe because you know we got another we got another four phases of this you guys think I'm not gonna come up with more videos come on no, I'm just kidding I will I will definitely be coming out with videos and the harder those trucks are to get the better the videos do so the Taiga 6455B, that one wasn't the greatest. My recording software felt felt like crapping out at a 
very bad time, so that video... I look at the quality of it now and I'm like, uh, I just... I don't know, I wish I would have been able to record it all. I mean, I could have just replayed it on another name, but I wanted to be one of the first ones to get it out. And so that was, uh... That was what it was. Otherwise, I... I, I could have, uh... Ooh, I could have waited, like... I don't know how long it would have taken me to do it again. Or just redo that part anyways. But, call it a couple of hours, but there was already... I think I was the second or third person to actually do it, if I remember correctly. But I believe I was the first one to figure out, or to post the Sprinter. And I was definitely the first one to get the Kirovitz K7M. So, being the first one is really helpful for YouTube purposes because those big channels they can post a video and like almost no matter what it's about they've got such a big following that it's gonna get a lot more views than than whatever I post and maybe it is higher quality content but my point is is if I made a how to get a Kirovitz K7M video and then uh, someone will say someone really big in the SnowRunner space I won't I won't name any names but you know if you guys can think of some of the bigger creators if they were to make the same video, how to get a cure of its K7M, it would probably pull twice as much views or, you know, maybe more than that on my video. And it's like, I just, there's nothing I can do about it. They have such a bigger, such a big following that, yeah, I'm just kind of, yeah, I was going to go in there and get some more fuel, but I don't need it. Um, they have such a big following that, uh, their video will get more views than mine will pretty much by default and then you know how YouTube search works is the more the more people who click on a video you know the more views it gets the more likes more comments shares all that kind of stuff it it all plays part of a factor into that video being higher on the list but if you're the first one to it and you can get a couple thousand views or even a couple hundred you know and then someone else comes into the space. Like, I, I, I get videos suggested to me now that are like, how to get the Kirovitz K7M and stuff, because I've watched other stuff, you know, about SnowRunner and whatever. And like, they, they've come out with it like three weeks ago, and the game came out four weeks ago, but it's like, they came out with it a week after mine. Not saying it's a bad thing, you know, all content is good con- or not good content, but if they showed how to get it, it's a good thing, is kind of what I was getting at with that, but the point is, is their video has like, you know, a couple hundred views, or maybe a couple thousand, and mine has, last time I looked, like 12,000, so it, it's got so much more views just because it, it got a jump start on all that kind of stuff. Alright guys, so this is where we started, Institute Warehouse, picked up the consumables, drove out, up, down this road, down here. This is where I was looking at, I stopped right here to see if I could take some kind of a shortcut and this is where that mountain pops out. So I was like, you could cut back on this road and then cut through here and like it, it wasn't really much of a shortcut so that's why we didn't do it. Here is the buyer or abandoned buyer it was called. And then the bricks spawned in. We had the cat up here, we drove down this trail and dropped it off into the Zixi. And then we took this trail and followed this up all the way into the gateway and so now we are up here we're gonna follow this down then we're gonna turn here follow this all the way into the corporate warehouse uh, so back to what I was talking about I'm not trying to bore you guys or anything but just trying to say that every little bit helps you know I'll, even if you guys just say it's a great video or whatever you know like a, a comment having one comment on there is going to help promote the video because it, it shows that there's more engagement um, it probably doesn't you know it, the percentage that it increases is like 0 .00000001 or you know something really small but it all helps and over time you know it helps you to build a, build a following, build a community, sort of. And if, if any of you guys 
have not commented on my videos before, you wouldn't know this probably, but if you have, you'll notice, or you will know, that I try to reply, like, as soon as I see it, basically. Um, a lot of the time, so my, my videos used to come out at noon central because I live in the central time zone. And actually they still do once daily pretty much, but two-thirds of my, my views are actually from outside the United States. 33.3% last time I checked was from the United States. And so I thought it made more sense to make my, my SnowRunner video, because most of my views are from SnowRunner, uh, posted at 7 a.m., which is like, I don't know, like 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., something like that over in Europe. Maybe not that late, but you know, somewhere around there, probably between like 10 and 3 or something. 10 seems a little early. Probably like 11, maybe 12 and 3, so, so I don't know. Anyways, it just makes more sense. So, I'm still sleeping at 7 a.m. my time, because actually I normally stay up late, and like, when I'm recording this, it's actually, I think it's just past midnight, let me check. 12.32 as of right now, so uh, yeah, there's definitely no way that I'm uh, waking up in six and a half hours, so if you guys reply to like the first you know, first video that comes out of SnowRunner in the day, I usually won't reply to that for like two or three well, it seems like most of my comments for those videos come at like nine-ish o'clock central time but I don't normally reply until I wake up, which is like around twelve so um, yeah, that, that's like the only time that I won't reply like right away. Because like, even if I'm doing something else, usually I'll just reply anyways. I'm trying to think of other times when I wouldn't reply. Okay, recording a video like I'm doing right now, if someone were to uh, post a comment, I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't reply unless I'm good planning on cutting that part anyways. Like there's some times where I have to go get another truck for something. Or, you know, whatever. And so I know I'm going to cut, like, this 10 minutes out. I'm like, well, I'm already going to cut this 10 minutes, so what's 11 minutes? Like, what does it matter if I add one more minute and I just reply to this person? I don't want to just, like, stop right now and reply to them if if I did get it. Just because it, I don't want the video all choppy if I can avoid it. But yeah, if, if I'm already going to cut something, then I'll just reply to you. Which I actually did that earlier today because I was cutting something and I was like, well, somebody replied to me and I just replied right back, so yeah, I think I'm really good at that, but uh, I obviously have a really small following, so that's easy and it'll get harder as we go, but we're here. Let's get these bricks dropped off. There we go, 630 experience and 6,850 for money. But that is going to be it for this video, guys. As always, stay tuned till the next one. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to watch another video, there's a random video on screen and another playlist. Please be sure to share the video, like it, comment, and subscribe. Turn on those bell notifications so you're notified when I upload. And until next time, peace.